Shalom, everybody. This is Chris with FirstCenturyChristianity.net. Today, I'm going to make it real quick because you know what? It's preparation time. It's actually decision time. You know what we're doing this week, brothers and sisters? We are crossing the Red Sea. And I want to know if you're coming. Are you coming? Because it's the bottom of the ninth. And this one is not going into extra innings. By, by bottom of the ninth, I mean we are sitting right now at the anniversary of the ninth plague from the Exodus. The anniversary of the tenth plague is Wednesday night, the Passover. That's the same night that Yeshua was in the tomb, voluntarily giving his life so we may have the opportunity to enter the Olam Haba as the Lamb of Yahweh. See, brothers and sisters, there were ten plagues at the Exodus. There were not ten plagues in the first century. Nope. Yeshua's ministry was about reaching people a different way. He reached them through love, patience, long-suffering, healing, and teaching. With incredible wisdom and humility, he went to the cross as a lamb to the slaughter. But when he comes back, it's going to be different. Much different. And we're closer to that now than I ever thought I would see in my lifetime. The world is falling apart at an incredible pace. A house divided cannot stand. This gets credited to Abraham Lincoln very often, and that's a shame because Lincoln was quoting the Messiah. The spiritual leaders of Yeshua's day accused him of doing miracles, blessed works, by the power of Satan. And he replied that a house divided cannot stand, meaning that him casting out demons would have put him at odds with the adversary, which he was at odds with the adversary. But isn't this just how society has become? As it was in the days of Noah, when the righteous ones are scarce and mocked. And now even the Christian schools are getting shot up by people who clearly have issues, if not demons. So the point here is that it's the bottom of the ninth. The tenth plague is just hours away. And at which plague are you going to decide to follow Yahweh? It comes down to a binary choice, Yahweh or not. Our Messiah made the choice to follow his father through death into resurrection. Tuesday night, we wash each other's feet the way Yeshua commanded. Wednesday night, we commemorate Abraham and Isaac, the Exodus, the sacrifice of Yeshua, and we look forward to the new Jerusalem. Because we're not looking forward to the old Jerusalem. We're looking forward to Yeshua's kingdom here on earth, Satan locked up, thousand years of peace, and then eternity. Thursday, we keep Hagamatza which is the first day of unleavened bread. This is the real Holy Week, brothers and sisters, and this is how it's done. How we do it varies, but we do it. And you're welcome to join. You're welcome to use the tools at this website to do it on your own. And if you're anywhere near Kansas City, you're absolutely welcome to join us. And just like when the Lib Hebrews were liberated, they were joined by hundreds of thousands of foreigners who knew the way out. That way was to follow Yahweh, just like Rahab, who knew the way out was to cling to Yahweh's people. And what about those people who didn't come? That's pretty bad, but it even gets worse. Pharaoh had an army who literally went to war against the creator of the universe. It is written that the cloud put itself at the rear of the fleeing mixed multitude to protect them from the army of evil, which continued to try to get through. Yahweh confused them. Yahweh even has our backs as we're leaving Egypt. And that's the same paradigm as at the end of the thousand years when the nations go to war against the holy city one last time. It's literally a binary choice. It's either for Yahweh and his son Yeshua, or it is for the adversary. So, brothers and sisters, we're crossing the Red Sea this week. We're leaving Egypt. And are you coming? Because guess what? Next time there are only seven plagues, not ten. So get in early. Shalom. And have a blessed festival season.